Welcome to Willis Ways In, where we discuss controversial and newsworthy tax topics. I'm Ben Willis, contributing editor with Tax Notes. Today, we'll be discussing tax career changes and challenges. I'm joined by three distinguished tax practitioners and planners, DeAndrea Green, who is a senior manager at Bennett Thrasher in their Atlanta office, Amy Colwell Breslow, who is of counsel in the DC office of Jones Day, and Nick Cato is joining us also and is the managing partner and founder at Leo Barrick. Thank you all for joining me today. Thank you, Ben. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. We'll go ahead and, and dive right in, and I'll ask uh, all three of you in, in this order, uh, Amy, D, and Nick, uh, could you share a little bit about your current roles? So thank you very much for inviting me, Ben. Um, my, uh, my current practice, uh, I practice across a broad range of U.S. federal tax matters, including cross-border mergers and acquisitions, spinoffs, and other divestiture strate- strategies and restructurings including opinion letters and seeking advanced rulings from the IRS. Um, In my practice, I marry substantial knowledge, um, tax knowledge with extensive experience working in-house and in the government, um, providing firsthand insights um, from each of these experiences. Um, I combined uh, these uh, these experiences um, to advise clients on certain specialized tax issues as well, such as cryptocurrency and FinTech transactions. Um, Outside of my role at Jones Day, I'm a vice chair and officer in the International Corporate Committee at ABA, respectively. I've spoken numerous times and am involved in other uh, organizations um, on issues arising in cross-chain sale transactions, such as BASIS and PTEP, 245 Cap A, uh, both domestic and international issues, and issues in a third-party sale, beat transactional issues reorganization and spinoff transactions, um, in particular active trader business issues where there's the so-called no income and device in the context of a foreign foreign spin. I'm also active in women in tax, um, programming, mentoring female attorneys and uh, always answering the question of why someone would join a law firm at this point in my career. And I think among all of us, I might have had the uh, most diverse career changes. <laughs> you certainly have uh, that I'm aware of, Amy. You've, you've got a lot <laughs> of uh, interesting changes. How about you, DeAndre? Hey, Ben, thanks again for having me. I am currently a senior manager in our um, tax department. I serve as a senior manager specifically for our state and local um, tax practice, so SALT, as uh, many may call it. And in that capacity, I am responsible for um, managing nexus and taxability studies, also voluntary disclosure agreements, um, as well as I um, help and assist with film tax and music tax credits. So anything having to do with the with state and local taxes, um, the credits, if people are familiar with why everybody is filming in the state of Georgia, it's because we have a robust sales tax credit where you get about 30% back. And so I assist with those and kind of, I started a new practice called Smart Compliance. And what we do there is we help handle all of the sales tax compliance um, matters for our clients. And we help them get automated with the likes of Avalara and Vertex and make sure that they stay compliant once we get them compliant. So, um, and I also serve as one of the chair or the leads for our diversity and inclusion committee. Um, And that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for sharing, DeAndre, I appreciate it. Nick, how about you? Could you share a little bit about your current practice? Absolutely, Ben. And thank you so much for having me today. I really appreciate it. I'm really glad to be here. Um, I just launched a new firm called Leo Barrick. It's a boutique M&A tax consulting shop. Uh, we're made up of a bunch of ex big four and big law partners. Uh, we focus on just M&A tax, what we do. So that's uh, tax diligence, tax modeling, tax structuring, opinion writing, PLRs, the whole like. And uh, we're about 15 people right now and growing, and uh, we're excited to be here. That's awesome. Thank you so much, and uh, congratulations on, on starting your new uh, business. It's, uh, it, it's quite a, a, a time to do that, and, uh, and, uh, and we're, we'll, we'll get to challenges shortly and, and, and hear a little bit more about um, and that. So uh, going back to Amy and, and working our way through again, um, 
if we could focus a little bit on all, all of the changes. I know uh, we, we've had a lot and we have a lot to talk about. So Amy, could you share a little bit about all the changes uh, throughout your tax career? Sure. So um, I started my career at an accounting firm um, at a time when the accounting firms were first starting to hire JDs out of law school um, and worked in a transaction uh, services group in an advisory capacity, working on structuring and diligence. And at that point, we did everything from international to domestic to partnerships, um, what they referred to as tax consulting. Um, after uh, many years there, um, I went, I left to go work in-house and focus in on uh, international tax, um, focus on day-to-day -day planning. Uh, I, my areas of expert, we say expertise of where I focused was uh, Europe and Asia. And um, this goes back to 2004 and where I led the 2004 version of Section 965 repatriation, um, which was a fantastic opportunity to really you know, springboard me into um, you know, just taking a deep dive into very you know, complex you know, uh, transactions and restructurings and understanding how US laws worked with uh, non-US laws. Um, you know, from there, um, you know, I started really getting an itch to um, work for the government. And there had been a hiring freeze for a very long time um, since before I, I had uh, graduated from law school. And um, I had heard that there would be opportunities opening up in DC, or excuse me, in the government and um, moved to DC and uh, took a role um, in uh, the Office of Chief Counsel of Corporate um, and decided to um, push the international stuff off to the side and focus in on uh, domestic. Um, I knew a lot about 367 and how 367 worked and planning around 367, but um, you know, wanted to hone in on subchapter C. And um, at Chief Counsel, I had the amazing opportunity to spend well over six years focused on tax-free reorganizations, spinoffs, um, and uh, related uh, provisions, um, Section 304 transactions, becoming the principal assigned to many pre-guidance plans in this space. Um, there was one practitioner who often referred to me as the 355 North South Czar at one point, <laughs> um, and um, you know, and you know, in that in that capacity, you know, I really had a very deep set skill in those areas. Um, Knowing I had a background in international, I kept my toes in the water and worked very closely with uh, the international division on many regulation projects, um, you know, including section 36785 regulations, the 367D notices, inversions, um, and various other projects related to enforcement in the cross-border area. And honestly, I, I hadn't um, really thought about leaving the government. I mean, this now spans, you know, um, right now what would be considered you know, three quarters of my career. And um, one day I received a phone call from a professional colleague who said, hey, would you come work here? And it was at a company um, that had a you know, reputation for you know, hiring and you know, employing some of the most stellar tax professionals in the world. Um, and it was an amazing opportunity and I just you know, couldn't say no. Um, and, you know, from 2015 through the beginning of 2019, um, you know, I, you know, worked on some, you know, fantastic transactions, um, you know, from all of these experiences, you know, I, at this point I'd been in-house, I'd been in government, um, you know, I had worked at an accounting firm, um, and even in the middle of this did a short stint at a law firm, you know, I really had learned that what I, that um, I added the most value and did my best work at a place that was collaborative, had a true open door policy, you know, thought about its people as people and was forward thinking. And, um, you know, in early 2019, a friend had said, hey, would you consider coming to work for Jones Day? And, you know, I met their head of tax and I did. And Jones Day is that sort of place. And that's, you know, where I ended up where I am. So, you know, it's been a great decision. 
thank you very much. You certainly did cover uh, the gambit there with respect to accounting, law, in-house, government, um, yeah. you, you, a lot of good changes and uh, yeah. happy to see the, the career path. And uh, you, just to, you- And just to put it out there, these are not career changes that happen every two years. Each of these places span, you know, many years. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you didn't start your career just a couple of years ago? Yeah. No, 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 not, 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 not at all. I'm, I'm in the, you know, the like twenty plus year category. <laughs> got it, got it. I didn't want to, didn't want to say any, give any number. No, I, I am. <laughs> I'm in the twenty plus year category. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure we're gonna be circling back to some of those uh, career changes. D, how about you? Uh, could you tell me a little bit about uh, some of your career changes, which uh, I'm, I'm familiar with, uh, and uh, I'm sure you, you'll, you might tie that in. Yeah, sure thing. Um, so I, um, shortly after receiving my LLM at Boston University, where I had the pleasure of meeting this guy, Ben Willis, who was, you know, one of my uh, study partners, kept me on my toes. Um, I spent most, I mean, I spent my entire career in accounting firms, um, knowing that I, I, that was kind of where I wanted to be. Um, started my career off at EY in Times Square in the diversified staffing program. And that program I was super excited about after leaving um, BU, thinking that I would have the uh, chance to rotate to different practices and see what I like. Um, while we were in school, I dabbled a little bit in international, but spent most of my time on corporations and really enjoyed that. Um, ended my time at EY and during research and development. Um, and it was at EY that I would speak to Ben. Ben and I would have a standing call and we would um, talk to each other about, hey, what are you doing at your job? What kind of career uh changes are you making, if any, um, what projects are you working on? So Ben was um, at PwC at the time at the national office in DC, and he was talking about all the uh, legal opinions and private letter rulings he was writing. And I was just so enamored by that. And um, I was you know, looking for some jobs and um, trying to make a career change. And Ben, you know, this is the power of networking. So I wanna throw that out there too, especially for any young attorneys or just anybody um, thinking about um, making a career change, just keeping your network strong and always you know, treating people with respect and um, staying in contact. So Ben let me know when the national office was hiring and um, sent my resume on and the rest was history. And while at PwC in the national office, I spent my time doing tax-free reorganizations and a lot of D355, so um, like Amy. So I was specialized in um, subchapter C. Um, and so I really enjoyed that fast pace, really enjoyed the camaraderie and just learning a great deal. And in that capacity, we, we were able to work a lot with the government. So um, saw that angle as well. And then um, to Bennett Thrasher, where I am now, I had a professional colleague and sorority sister who was headed to another, um, headed to work at um, MTV to work with their film tax credits. And she didn't want to leave Bennett Thrasher kind of high and dry. So she said, would you consider um, specializing in that? And I was like, well, you know, I've been doing M&A for a while. I don't know if I know anything about um, film tax credits. And she said, if you know M&A, you can know uh, film tax, tax credits. So that's how I ended up in Atlanta um, at Bennett Thrasher. And um, so I spent the first two years doing film tax credit work. And um, I have a passion for entertainment. I went to performing arts high school here in Atlanta and Atlanta is home. Um, so I, it, it was a natural fit. And then I talked to another partner who knew my background at PwC and EY and said, hey, why don't you do traditional salt work? Never done salt work, didn't know what nexus other than what I learned in school, what, you know, was and um, taxability as far as it related to how the, the state's tax for sales tax purposes. So I kind of dove right in and really found that I enjoy, I enjoy um, sales tax. Um, I enjoy the taxability. Um, I enjoy trying to help clients um, save money. I enjoy telling clients even though they don't always enjoy where you should be paying sales tax because I don't want you know to get you to get audited so um, so that you know it's what I do now and then also like I said we help our clients get compliant and I saw a need in our practice that said hey we got clients compliant but they're not staying compliant or how do we 
ensure that they stay compliant. And we just started a new practice called Smart Compliance, where I assist my, my clients with the full kind of picture. So, um, yeah, so I've been in, not, unlike Amy, which I, you know, that she's had such a vast, you know, um, experience, but I spent mine just in accounting firms and have, you know, really enjoyed it and enjoyed how much that I've learned and how much people are willing to throw at me at day one. So that's my career changes. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that, Dee. I really appreciate it. I, um, I know you, you talk about the, the power of networking and, and I, I can't help but agree. All right, uh, Nick, uh, last but certainly not least, uh, would you share a, a little bit about the changes uh, throughout your tax career? Yeah, absolutely, Ben. Thank you so much. Um, coming out of grad school, I started my career at Deloitte in a group that no longer exists. It was a, more of a products group, a lot of contingent fee work. Uh, it was a great practice. I learned a ton there. Um, you know, that was a bit of a different move. Most of my friends were going into more general roles with the big four firms. I went more of a niche path and I really learned a lot and got a lot out of it and was happy I did that. Um, after that, a group kind of faded away because uh, of Cirque 230 and whatnot. I, uh, I moved on to KPMG and I moved to New York City and worked for a guy named Greg Falk, who I know Amy knows really well. Um, and, uh, you know, it was an amazing experience there. Uh, I was there for quite a while in their M&A tax practice. Greg's now a part of Leo Barrett, which is amazing to have him, you know, back with the team and uh, working with me. It's uh, very blessed to have that. Um, and uh, after I stayed in New York City, I went to our national office like he did um, and focused on sub C and m and I worked with uh, Mark Hoffenberg there, who was just an amazing mentor of mine and uh, still lives to this day. Uh, big impact on my career. And uh, after uh, Washington National Attacks, I moved out west and worked for a guy named David Toller, who is also now a part of Leo Barrick. <laughs> and uh, it's funny how that works. Um, and so we're really lucky to have that experience to work with Dave, and I'm glad to be working with him again as well. And, um, you know, when I left uh, working with Dave, the board opportunity was an odd move. I got asked to move to Canada, of all places, to lead their cross-border M&A tax practice and thinking to myself, why would I move to Canada to do U.S. tax? It's kind of an odd, <laughs> an odd move. Um, but the Canadian firm, you know, made a really compelling argument about, you know, how those clients that needed some help, you know, having a local resource would be really beneficial. And, you know, I was, I was actually up there for eight years and um, built a practice, uh, you know, from nothing into, you know, over 20 people nationally uh, just doing U.S. M&A tax in Canada. And it was an amazing experience to, um, you know, kind of go through that. Um, and then very recently, you know, I decided to leave KPMG um, and move on to form my own firm, Leo Barrick. And it's been an amazing experience kind of, you know, transitioning from a partner role in a big four firm to owning your own firm. And I've grown a lot professionally. And again, I've been really blessed to just have, you know, so many great clients kind of immediately kind of seek out help uh, with us. And so uh, we're off to the races and uh, I'm very happy that uh, to be here. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nick. And uh, it's uh, interesting to hear about all your, your changes. I, I know uh, you and I met while you were in Canada leading yeah. a very successful practice at KPMG. And so uh, the cross-border transactions we were both working on were um, certainly interesting. And, and the fact that you can now bring all that expertise to your clients uh, in your own firm um, amidst uh, uh, a challenging environment, which uh, kind of tees up the next issue. Uh, so uh, let's uh, let's dive into that, which is uh, today we're focused on career changes and, and challenges, and we've covered uh, the, some changes, but moving on to challenges, um, Amy, would you start us off and tell us a little bit about some of the challenges uh, that you faced throughout your career? Sure. Um, you know, one, one of the biggest challenges that I faced, and I will admit that I still face this challenge, um, is, you know, taking my type A personality, which, you know, I think many of us, you know, listening to this, and maybe even some of us on the call, share and pushing it aside at times to make the decision that is actually best for me as a person, as a mom, you know, for my health, what is best for my family, um, and maybe what may not be the best move either from my career or for me as the tax lawyer. What I mean by this is not necessarily 
you know, not doing the best job I can do at work, but is the, you know, decisions that have caused me to take a step or two back, sometimes not necessarily starting new, but having to learn something brand new um, and take, or take a back seat to someone, you know, more junior and having, you know, and learning from, from that person um, because they have been, you know, in that area working, you know, predominantly in that area. And I am just starting in that area, um, delaying promotion, um, you know, and needing to prove myself or work under a microscope, um, you know, over the course of my career, you know, with all of these career changes and why I've made them, um, you know, it's not always been, oh, because, you know, I want to go work in DC and, you know, better myself, you know, I've got married, I had a child, um, you know, I moved from New York City, my home, um, you know, to DC, you know, I've lost, you know, my, my, my parents, my mom, who I was incredibly close with, you know, I've suffered and overcome, you know, my own health challenges. Um, and, you know, when it comes to making a decision between myself um, and, you know, when I need to slow down or say no, um, you know, or ask for help, you know, I'm not always the best decision maker at that. But, you know, I, you know, often think, you know, what are other people going to think about this? Um, they'll think I'm a slacker or I can't do the work or I'm not good enough to be here. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's that challenge. It's reconciling that challenge. Um, and, you know, and the best thing that I've learned um, is to, you know, to find a work environment and find people that, you, you know, either mentors or people that, you know, you, you currently work with that you can talk to, um, you know, that, um, you know, really support you. Um, you know, that sometimes the right path is not always the easy path. Um, you know, many things in your life are out of your control. Um, and being able to ignore um, people who might judge you um, and not just, you know, in your workplace, but just, you know, in, in, you know, the, in your life, you know, in the tax bar, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, in a negative light for taking a path that they may not have taken because it did push you back, you know, a step, um, you know, it's sometimes it's the hardest mind game to get over. And, you know, and that, and that, that is, that is a huge challenge. Um, and it continues to be a challenge that I, you know, need to, need to, need to push through. Um, and, you know, that's, you know, um, you know, one of, one of the challenges that, you know, I continue you know, to face with um, and just, you know, and then finding, you know, the people, you know, to, to support me, um, you know, on those, you know, for those, in those decision-making processes has been great, you know, been great. I've got, you know, a lot of support, um, you know, as you know, Nick had mentioned, you know, Greg Falk, um, and we, I kind of laughed when he said that because, you know, Greg, you know, really was a huge, um, you know, mentor of mine in my, you know, early part of my career. Um, you know, and now, you know, I work with, you know, Andrew Eisenberg, uh, who's, you know, a great supporter and, you know, great mentor with whom I work. Um, Edward Kennedy uh, out of our New York office is also, you know, a great person with whom I work. Um, and, uh, you know, that's really, you know, it, it's, it's good to know that you, you, you have those people and uh, there's been a lot of people along, along the way, so. Thank you for sharing that. I thought that was very valuable. Dee, um, how about you? Would you mind sharing with us uh, some of the challenges you've encountered over your career? Of course. I, I would say one of them is um, speaking up for yourself and knowing your worth. You know, a lot of people will kind of rest on their technical skills and rest on and say, surely if I do a good job, surely if I put my head down, someone will promote me, someone will move me up the ladder. But I have found in my career that that's not always the case. And Amy kind of alluded to this, but about having the right people. Um, and I was reading a book called Great, um, From Good to Great, and the author talks about that, having the right people on the bus. So for me, um, one of the challenges is have, just having good mentors and sponsors, um, because I think that that helps propel your career and helps pivot you when you need to pivot. Or um, So I think having someone put your, their arm around you and say, I see this in you, let me help you correct these other things. So I think that's a big challenge sometimes, um, having um, the right people on your career path, right? And you knowing what you're worth and what your skills are to be able to speak up for that and not just let people kind of make decisions for you. Um, so, and that was early on in my career, I, I just thought, um, 
I'll just try to do my best. I'll try to learn as much as I can when I'm making mistakes. I'll try to learn from those mistakes. And and somebody will see something in me and they'll tell me when I'm moving. And I think that's, um, at Bennett Thrasher, we have a program called Coaching and Driving. And um, our drivers are, because you're supposed to drive your own career. And I'm supposed to coach them and give them advice as they're driving. So I like that kind of analogy that you should drive your own career. I think um, a ch- not necessarily a challenge, but a lesson that I kind of learned is to be flexible in your career. As you can see, we've all kind of changed and pivoted in our career, whether we want it to or not. Um, but it's about being flexible. And um, for me, it's whether the economy um, was bad, you have to know how to pivot. pivot when you think that you're not, um, you're not enjoying what you're doing anymore. And you're not going to always love everything that you're doing. But sometimes if that's not a perfect fit for you, it's uh, the sooner you're, you get off the bus, the better kind of. So I think um, being just flexible with the ebbs and flows of, um, of career and knowing that things will change and you have to be willing to go along with those things. And uh, I think those have been some of my uh, some of my struggles. And um, the other one is just having to, Amy alluded to this too, having to prove myself a lot, having to prove that I'm more than just a quota. Um, I'm mo- more than um, just what you see on paper, but just having to really prove myself in a room where not everyone looks like me. Thank you, Dee, for sharing. I really appreciate that. Nick, um, I know you just started up your own firm, uh, Leo Barrick, and uh, amidst uh, a global pandemic, uh, some people might say that's uh, a pretty uh, big challenge. Um, would you share a little bit about uh, all the challenges that you faced through your career in both leaving the U.S. and, 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 and anything you think uh, you'd be willing to share with us would be appreciated? Yeah, absolutely, Ben. I mean, I mean, I feel like uh, it's, 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 um, it's a life is the constant challenge. You know, there's all these challenges in front of you, all these things you have to overcome. You know, I've always been different, you know? Um, I think you mentioned, alluded to it earlier too. You know, I'm, I look different when I lived in Japan. I look different than people who live in Japan. When I moved to the U.S., I look different here. And so I've kind of lived my whole life being different. And, you know, my career has been different too. You know, my first job at a grad school was not the traditional route. It was very different, you know? Um, you know, going to national tax was a different move. You know, that wasn't what a lot of my friends were doing. That was a different, a different move. And then moving to Canada, you know, that was different. You know, no one you know, who does U.S. MA tax in Canada. You know, uh, I did apparently. You know, and so that was a different move. And uh, and then you know, leaving the firm as you know, I was a senior partner, and life was great. And you know, leaving, you know, at that level to just start afresh and open your own firm is different. You know, and so my whole career. I've done things a little different and it doesn't mean that it's wrong or right. It's it's just different. And I think, you know, any advice that I would give to anyone is not being afraid to be different. Uh, I think that would be, you know, a message. You should embrace it and, you know, do what your heart tells you to do. And, you know, don't worry about following the herd or doing what others are doing. And it's okay to be different. It's okay to think different, embrace it and truck on. Fantastic advice. Thank you very much, Nick. Appreciate that. All right. Well, we, we've all shared so much. Uh, I want to open up the floor a little bit because um, I know we can relate with one another. Uh, I, I certainly uh, heard a lot of things that I could relate with, uh, challenges and, and feeling different and, and, and uh, uh, family problems, uh, health problems, all sorts of stuff. And I'm just curious uh, as to what you all heard today uh, from each other that you could relate with that you might want to mention. And I mean, I'll, I'll start, Ben. I mean, I, I heard Amy and Dee both talk about it, and I alluded to it a little earlier, but it's good to hear them mention it as well, is, you know, you don't do it by yourself, you know? There's always people along the way with you that are helping you, mentors, friends, colleagues, and uh, I think that's a you know, really important takeaway, and it's really comforting to hear Amy and Dee talk about their experiences, too, because, you know, no one does it by themselves, and I think that's an important takeaway that, you know, if you're going to be successful in the long term, it's important to have mentors. It's important to have people that you can rely on. And I'm glad that I've had so many great ones in my career and I continue to work with them. Yeah, and I would, I, I would add to that, that it's, 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 it's okay to have, to acknowledge your challenges. Um, you know, sometimes I know I, I've 
encountered myself. I, you know, I encountered this where sometimes, you know, I think I'm the only one that, you know, that that's, in, you know, struggling with something and, you know, won't, you know, don't want to ask for help or may hesitate to ask for help or won't ask the question, um, you know, assuming, well, everybody else probably knows the answer. And so, um, you know, really kind of, you know, really getting in that mindset of, and, you know, D, D alluded to this, um, you know, to speak up. And, um, you know, that uh, it's, you know, it, it, uh, there are other, you know, there are other people out there um, who, you know, and we, and we say this, you know, you're not, you know, you're not the only one there, there's others, but, you know, sometimes particularly in, you know, this current environment, which I know none of us have talked about at all in this current environment where we may not be seeing, you know, colleagues every day, um, you know, and, you know, uh, it, you know, it's, it's a, it's a little, you know, can be a little disconnecting, um, you know, to really know what, what's, what's going on, but it's okay to acknowledge, you know, that, um, you know, it's sometimes you do need to just, you know, slow down or, you know, to ask the question because you, you know, you're, you're not having those everyday conversations you might've had if you were in the office. I think that's good too, Amy, because if we speak up, you know, you never know who you're helping on the other side, what you're walking through might help somebody else. Um, because I think all of what we do is not just about our technical skills, but it's about who you help bring up behind you as well. And to be able to use your test as a testimony for them to be able to say, hey, I went through this. This is, you know, an idea for how you walk it out. I think another um, challenge too that I didn't mention, like, because we're all type A personalities and, you know, overachievers, there's a lot of competition, right? And um, I learned that I wanted to be more collaborative, collaborative rather than competing with people. Like Ben said, we would collaborate and write on the whiteboard and say, well, what about this? What about this? Instead of saying, Ben is my direct competition. I gotta beat him. Because like you, like you guys all talked on here, how you guys have colleagues, you know, alike. We know a lot of the same people because, you know, Amy, we talked about Derek Kane, how we know a lot of the same people in this tax world. It's just so small. And, you know, why not be collaborative? And Nick really resonated with me about just being different. Like I said, I now am one of the leads for our diversity and inclusion. And um, I grew up a military child. So I was a, always around different um, people, but in corporate America, I've only I've always only been the only black woman in the room. But I didn't shy away from that because I said, well, you know, we're going to bring more diversity to our firms. That's just it. I'm going to be the example and the role model to say we need more like her. Her difference is I use my challenges um, and um, you know to help prepare pre and propel my career and. Um, I like Amy like to mentor young women and try to help them face. If I can help them um, not have to face some of the challenges I faced, I want to do that um, and um, you know and and make sure I network and speak up. <laughs> and then um, the the final thing, like Amy worked everywhere. I know one of my struggles early on when I decided to work, no, in in a good way when I decided to wait work for an accounting firm. A lot of my law school friends were like, you're going to a um, to an accounting firm? Why not a law firm? And so I would hear that repeatedly. Or if we go to conferences because of legal reasons, you know, sometimes we can't put Esquire on our cards or JDLLM because we're at, a, at, a, um, at an accounting firm. So I would always have to prove like, I am a lawyer. I st I, I'm a good lawyer just because I'm at an accounting firm. That was one thing that, you know, I struggled with. And I still hear it now when I hear younger people younger people talk like, why do I want to go to an accounting firm? I'm not going to be recognized as a lawyer, but you absolutely will still be recognized as a lawyer. And we're all still doing the, the you know, such great work. And that's, it's good to hear the stories, Dee, and, you know, Amy alluded to as well, um, that the, the whole idea of mentorship, you know, and bringing people up is uh, something that, you know, I've focused on my career at, at each each career change, you know, and I don't know about you guys, but uh, I've always evaluated myself, not on how successful my business was as far as revenue or new clients, but how many people I helped get promoted or develop and get to the next level. 
And that's always been a focus of mine. It sounds like it's been a focus of yours as well. And I feel like it's awesome to hear that, you know, because um, not everyone shares those views. But you know, that's been a goal of mine, you know, everywhere I've uh, kind of moved on to. And then my new firm, it's a new goal of mine. You know, how many partners, you know, can I make in Leo Barrick? You know, and that's that's exciting. You know, that, that, that gets me up in the morning and uh, gets me jobs for the day. Yeah. Well, can wow. I ask you guys all a question? You, Ben, yeah. Amy, and, and Nick. Yeah. And, and I know we talked about this a little bit, um, but, I, you know, I am a single woman and um, I know sometimes those things played in my head, whether it was time for me to start a family. Um, do I look for a family? Because I was so career driven from college. I knew I wanted to go to law school and I just didn't focus on. I'm like, nope, all I see is career. I'm not worried about a husband. I'm not worried about kids. And then when we were in the national office, we didn't have a lot of female partners. You know, and so I wondered about that. So can you guys kind of just talk about, because you all have families and you guys are all so successful and I admire that about you guys. So, and I know somebody watching might be thinking what I'm asking you guys, how do you balance family and being the success stories that you guys are? Yeah, so I, um, uh, you know, I, I will say that, um, you know, no one probably ever, including myself, really just would have described me as a mother for a mother first and then a lawyer. In fact, one of my colleagues, I was in the government when I was pregnant with my daughter. And one of my colleagues described me as a lawyer who happened to be pregnant because I, I would walk up the stairs every single day to the fifth floor. And, um, and I tried to do something and I was like, and I was like, oh my God, I, I couldn't do it. And because I was, I was pregnant. Like I couldn't lift my leg. I need to like lean on a chair or something. And she's like, you know, you, you are the type of, she's like, you happen to be, a, you're a woman who happens to be pregnant. And it was just very, it was funny the way she said it, because I was so career driven. And then, um, you know, when I had my daughter, it kind of like did like this 180 on me where, um, you know, you know, it really, it changed just the way, and I'm sure it's very cliche, like, oh, you know, all of a sudden, but it really became this, um, this balance of both and really redefining sort of the, the way, the way I, the, the way I lived and just, you know, even my, my job, like at the government and, um, you know, I still worked a lot of hours, you know, I mean, I was, you know, at work, I think it was at my desk by six 30 in the morning. And yes, I brought, you know, work home to do at home. And, um, but, you know, it really, it, it, you know, it became, um, you know, really such, such an integral part. And when I talk about sometimes, you know, the when I talk about the challenges and making what is the best decision, um, you know, it's, it's knowing that, you know, 20 years ago, you know, I was, you know, like the most billable associate, you know, I, I you know, and just, you know, or, you know, was getting an award for something. And, you know, maybe it's that, you know, I, you know, I did have to take a step back from doing, you know, from, from doing some of that. And no, I, you know, I don't go to every, I, I've not made it to every ballet recital. Um, but, you know, I'm still, you know, very involved, um, you know, you know, with things in my daughter's life. Um, and I can list the number of activities. Um, and it's, and, and that's where I see this challenge. And for me, it's been, um, probably one of the most like eye-opening, you know, things, um, you know, that I've, I've experienced, um, for myself is, um, you know, the way that I view my career and my role as a mother, where, you know, now I think I would, you know, say that, yes, I am a mom, you know, I am a lawyer, I'm a wife, I'm also an athlete and, you know, I, I ride a certain bike, you know, many, many hours, sometimes a day. <laughs> um, but it really defines, you know, it, defi it defines who you are. And, um, but did it, you know, did having a child, you know, set me, you know, I will say set me back, you know, in terms of, you know, yes, you know, it, it was, I took time off, you know, didn't, you know, um, I forget how many months I, I took off, but, um, you know, and I did have to say no to some projects. And, um, you know, I think that, that, that when I say my biggest challenge is sometimes you have to sit back and think, all right, you know, in making this career decision, um, what, how will this affect my family? And, you know, and Ben, I think you're, you're you know, maybe if you want to take this next, I mean, 
you know, um, I think you know, your your decision um, after you had your son is probably, you know, one of, you know, not to tell your story, but I'll, ha I'll hand it, maybe I'll ship to you next. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, um, I'll, I'll jump in. Uh, I think, um, you know, the ebbs and flows that uh, we've all talked about throughout our careers um, and adjusting to them and appreciating them, um, uh, you know, and, and family is a big part of that. Uh, and, and for me, my circumstances are a bit unique uh, because uh, I was adopted at, at five and, and I went back into state custody at 12. And so, um, you know, adjusting and appreciating work-life balance. Um, I, I didn't really have role models to look up to growing up to, to see that. And uh, one of the things that really hit me hard in my career was uh, something I, I know most parents deal with to some degree is parental guilt. And, uh, and, and when I had my son, I, I was working and traveling a lot. And, um, you know, I, I find that uh, my son is able to center me in a way that uh, almost nothing else can my, my family and, and really bring me into the present moment and uh, and I love that especially in the world of tax where things are so analytical and you're you're, you're you get so deep into the weeds um, and so uh, finding my way to the uh, a, f a fantastic job here at tax analyst was just a blessing and uh, I feel so lucky uh, for that and uh, I, I want to get back to Nick because I know uh, Nick uh, ha has dealt with uh, some moves and is now closer to some family, I believe. And uh, and I'd be curious to hear what his thoughts are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, I would say, and I would echo everything that Amy and Dennis said as well, and maybe highlight one other point, um, which is, you know, the most important partnership that I've had in my life is my partnership with my wife. And, you know, that's, she's been critical to, my professional success as well. No, zero percent chance I'd accomplished half of what I was able to accomplish without her support. Um, and uh, I would hope she would say the same about me. Uh, so you know, we've, we've uh, you know, been a really great team. You know, so I, I met her in New York City. Um, you know, she followed me to DC. You know, she found out, uh, you know, made some sacrifices for her career to be with me in DC at her international office because that was good for me and in my career. She made that sacrifice, you know, after BC, we moved out West for her so she could finish up her doctorate. Uh, and so that was something that I did for her career. And then, you know, she followed me up to Canada because that was a move that I thought would be great for my career as well. And she rebuilt her life up there. We had two beautiful kids up there. Um, and, you know, she got to a point where she wanted to open up her own business and move to San Diego, which is closer to family. And the weather is also pretty good. <laughs> and, uh, and so I said, that's a good idea. And so you know, she was really the onus for us to move to San Diego from, from Canada and also for me to start my own business. You know, she gave me that confidence to say, you know, you've, you've done this before. You've done it so many times, you know, let's just do it together in San Diego. I'll open my business. You'll open yours. We'll raise our family there and we'll collaborate with that and it'll be awesome. She's much smarter than me. And uh, she, you know, you know what didn't take much convincing and it's been a great decision and I'm glad that uh, I am where I am and I'm glad to have the support that somebody have. Yeah. The other, the other thing I would add Dee, is um, when I, when I left the government, a huge part of my success is that my, my mom and stepfather lived with us, mm -hmm. um, you know, for a number of years, you know, until my mom passed away and uh, my stepfather until only recently. And my husband is, you know, a huge, you know, support network as well. So, you know, much of my, you know, success, you know, is attributable to, you know, raising my child, um, I should say raising, raising my daughter, um, you know, uh, with, you know, my mom, you know, in my house, my stepfather, who, you know, who did many pickups and drop-offs and, <laughs> You know, you know, a lot of cooking and laundry. It and, takes a village, right? You know, and it's true. You know, it's, it, you know, I, I would be, you know, I, I can't say that, you know, I would, I am able to do what I do every day right now, if it wasn't right now, particularly if it wasn't for my husband. Um, you know, he, you know, he does bear more than 50% of, you know, 
you know, dealing with, with school right now and dealing with, uh, you know, whatever activity, you know, whether it's Zoom or, you know, socially distant, whatever is going on, you know, it's, you know, he does, you know, he deals with a lot of that. And so that's, you know, been, you know, just, it's this, it's the village um, and friends, you know, um, you know, there's been, there's been many calls made at five minutes to six when there's been need to be picked up with, you know, you know, a, a massive text that's gone out, you know, both ways with, you know, whoever is closest to, you know, aftercare, please pick up. <laughs> so. Well, thank you all. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what, when, when you all accepted the, the invite to join today's discussion, I was so excited. Um, you're like my tax career heroes and inspirations. Uh, when I think about challenges and changes and careers, you you three like pop to mind. And uh, and I know there's there's a lot of folks who are dealing with a lot of difficulties right now. And the fact that I'm able to uh, help uh, them by by sharing your insights uh, with the world, and I and I know that you're all welcome and open to receiving uh, you know questions from. Uh, other practitioners who are seeking advice and uh, uh, you, you've certainly given it to me throughout my career and, and again been been an inspiration you, you make me want to be a, a better person and you all motivate me and so um, thank you so much for, for joining us today I, I really appreciate it well yeah. thank you again Ben Willis weighs in is so exciting to me and just to watch your evolution you are a tax hero and I mean, just look at that library in the back, guys. He is a hero, nerd, all of the above, and still an absolute fun guy. I can truly attest to that. Like, he balances his nerdiness with, you know, if I was still in a DC, it'll be, it'd be a call. Hey, after we discuss this, what movie are we going to see? And um, <laughs> so you are a phenomenal um, tax um, and legal mind. So thank you again for having us. I wouldn't have been anywhere else. And it was such a pleasure to meet Amy and Nick. So thank you for, um, you guys don't ignore me when I say you're my new best friends and I reach out <laughs> to you guys and don't say D who. No. <laughs> so thank you, Ben. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it, Amy. And thank you, Nick. Yeah. All right. Well, for those of you watching and listening, thank you so much for joining us today. Don't hesitate to reach out to me with any questions or comments and also to uh, Amy, D and Nick, who I'm, I'm gonna put on the spot as well. Um, if you're looking to reach out to me, you can contact me at ben.willis at taxanalyst.org by email, or you can find me at Twitter at Willis Wazen. Mm -hmm.